morning welcome back to my channel so this is a, another tips video for you guys so the reason that i felt inspired to make this video is this week me and my husband we sat and watched chasing the coral which was this amazing film by these incredibly passionate guys who are really interested in coral bleaching and of course what that's doing to the coral reefs around the world how that's impacting those ecosystems it was incredibly it's sad um but so interesting because i didn't know anything about coral and it was really incredibly beautiful um and it's amazing and i didn't know that and it's it's so sad that it's disappearing so it kind of got me into a bit of a funk really for the week um just thinking about all of the the natural things that are happening that are so sad and instead of being in a funk the best thing you can do when you get a bit overwhelmed about the environment and nature i think is to think about the positives what are the positive things that are happening what are scientists doing what are communities doing what things on an individual level can you also do so i thought about you know hobbies work etc i try to be environmentally friendly with products i buy in the house all of those things um so just wanted to share some tips really for our hobbies and what we love and what we're so passionate about what things can we do to make some small changes um and if everyone makes small changes of course those add up so just wanted to have a bit of a positive um, spin on the things that were kind of getting me a bit down um, and hopefully spread some awareness and share the love. So our first thing is um, water and hydration. So obviously when hiking that is super important to us to remain hydrated. One of the main things I try to do is use reusable bottles um another thing is you know hot drinks as well instead of going you know starbucks getting a coffee etc you can make a coffee put it in a decent flask i've got a really great outkit flask that i really love um keeps my drinks hot all day so that's just two really simple ways of reducing um plastic and waste just by carrying your own water Another thing you can do, obviously if you're out for a long time, is if you're going to run out of water, there are other options such as water purification tablets. I use those out on Dartmoor. And also you can get like, the soya filters or the life straws, those kind of things. So you can just keep refilling from what's around you and lessen your environmental impact in that way. Hot drinks, obviously you could make your own on the trail. Um, and keep going that way. So the second thing is very closely related to drinks is food. <laughs> so um, food, I tend to take with me um, like lunches that I've made from home. So they'll be in reusable containers. I find that also creates less litter, etc. for me to have to then carry back with me it's quite a clean way of carrying your food and then carrying out your waste and your rubbish and other things that you can do of course is use like sporks so you don't end up using you know plastic cutlery even like the vegware they are very hard to degrade down because we don't actually have the infrastructure to actually compost a lot of stuff that is compostable it depends really where you live in the country so easiest way is you know bring your own cutlery sounds obvious but there's a whole background to all those other options there other thing of course is support local businesses and eat locally produced food that's of good quality uh, that isn't an always an option obviously i go up onto dartmoor it's not littered with local cafes everywhere but when we did the south downs way there was loads of small local businesses using local produce and it also depends what your budget is you may not be able to afford that so 
picking your own lunch is often a really great economical option and it's you know where it's come from what's in it and what you're taking back home with you so that's great so number three is rubbish so that is a massive bugbear for me there's the sort of people who drop litter there's the sort of people who see litter and go oh that's a shame but don't pick it up and then there's those people who pick it up so if you're one of those people who picks it up thank you appreciated from me to you that you're also doing that if you don't pick it up don't feel bad you know this isn't about punishing anyone else or I'm more environmentally friendly than you it's just about those small changes that we could all make to the natural environment that we all love and do our part in helping to take care of that so just be mindful of rubbish are you able to take it back home with you most likely the answer is yes you managed to get it there so uh, if you can take a bit extra then that's even better so tip number four this is thinking about sort of trips that we're going on um, and what we're doing on a day to day so obviously fuel at the moment is very expensive i'm not going to get into that but environmentally if we're thinking about our carbon footprint then of course if we can stay more local we are reducing our carbon footprint so sometimes i will think i could go to this place but i think do you know what actually i haven't been to this place and this place is closer so it's going to involve driving less miles driving less miles every little helps doesn't it other things that you can do is public transport could you get the train to where you're going get the bus all of those little things car share with a friend all of those things help to reduce your carbon footprint and overall every little bit adds up and that's really what the story is here i guess is every little thing that we do that adds up all those little positives we just want to be moving in the right direction with all of these things and number five is clothing and products so clothing and products obviously depends on your individual budget some people could afford to buy new stuff other people might not be able to so if you can't afford to buy new obviously pre-loved is a great way of buying excellent products that you may not be able to afford otherwise and also you are taking those products away from just going to landfill so that is absolutely fantastic if anything that probably far better than buying something new but we all like to buy new things there's nothing wrong with that so my suggestion there is thinking about what products we're buying and where we're buying from so i try to buy from B Corp companies. They say, there's no planet B. You can go onto their website and it gives you loads of information. It's all about supporting local communities, making sure that workers are paid fairly and that environmentally friendly um, factories are run and the thought process into design and also materials and the impact onto the environment from that beginning process for the life cycle of that item, whether that's bags, clothes, boots, etc. So some good companies that I tend to use are Outkit. They do a lot of um, very well thought out products that do last very well. It's stuff that I'm gonna have for years it's well designed and often it includes recycled materials or it's organic, etc. Other company that I've recently found is Crag Hoppers. A lot of their polyester is made from recycled plastic bottles. I found quite a few of their products are generally a little bit cheaper as well. So they are excellent if you are just starting out. Other companies are like Vivo Barefoot. I use their shoes and boots um, because there, there just doesn't seem to be much else like them on the market. So other things to think about, and I have touched on this already, 
is the fabrics that things are made from. So I tend to prefer natural fabrics. So if it's cotton, it's gonna be organic cotton, like this Finister t-shirt. If it's merino, you want to go for like muslin free merino because it's better for the sheep and also look into those companies a little bit when you're choosing merino products. The things are synthetics. So of, as I mentioned, there's quite a lot of brands doing stuff with recycled fabrics. I buy Adidas swimsuits and they're made from recycled plastics and fishing nets. There's a lot of stuff that's made from recycled plastic bottles and the fabrics are absolutely spot on, like my waterproof coat. So other things to think about is your puffy jacket. So you can buy a down jacket. It may not be um, responsible down. So RDS down means that it's come from poultry that's been used for the food industry and then the feathers are collected. There's no live plucking. So that's quite an important thing to think about. But again, there is a cost associated with that. So it may not be practical for you or reasonable that you can afford RDS down. In that case, there are quite a lot of brands such as Outkit again and Craig Hoppers that are doing um, recycled synthetic fills. And those are much better nowadays you can get a good balance between warmth and weight ratio. So my recycled jacket is about the same pack down size as my actual down jacket. So it's absolutely brilliant. And if you're really lucky, there are products out there as well where they use recycled down and recycled fabrics. Um, and I have a sleeping bag like that. So it's just having a look, having a think about where we're buying from, what we're buying, what goes into the life cycle of that product from manufacturing and sourcing to the end life of that product. Is it gonna break down? Is it gonna go into landfill? How long is it gonna last? Obviously, one product as outdoor enthusiasts that we use a lot, especially in the UK, is waterproofing. So, one thing to think about is what goes into waterproofing that could be harmful and leaches into our environment. So this is things that leach from your clothing in the rain into the water system or the ecosystem. Now, I'm not going to explain it because it's more than I can give a simple explanation for in a video. But what I will do is I will put a link in the description below so if you are interested at what pcf free means you can look that up so what i tend to do is reproof my own clothing instead of buy again and that prolongs the life of your clothing so i reproof with pcf free durable water resistant washing product and then of course when you wash in that also goes from your washing machine, drains out or before it goes into the environment. So it's all going into the environment at some point, whether this is a product at the end of its life cycle, or this is a product being maintained through its life cycle, as well as manufacturing and resourcing. So there's quite a lot of different layers here, but there are some fantastic companies taking care of all of that for you. Otherwise, as I say, if you cannot afford to buy new, which a lot of people can't, and there's no judgment here, pre-loved, excellent way to get fantastic products and save those going to landfill. The other thing is, of course, fix and repair. So if it's old, instead of just replacing it and letting that go to landfill, you know, fix it and repair it if you can. There are services that do that for you. So I know that Outkit and Patagonia, um, I think also Finisterre nowadays, you can send products, whether it's theirs or someone else's sometimes to them, they will fix it for you and send it back. And there's usually a small associated cost with that but it's better than something going to landfill if it can be helped. 
So fix and repair, also very, very important there. And finally, the last tip we have for eco hiking is tread lightly and leave no damage. So that means if it's really wet, you, you love this wood, you want to go there, but if you're going to be trashing those trails, save it for another day. Other things, you know, don't pick. So don't pick plants, etc., flowers. Um, they are in the right place where they should be. Just take a photo. Don't take anything with you. And then, of course, always say this after a wild camp, leave no trace. And that's the same for everything, whether leaving no traces, leaving no litter, leaving no damage, or even better than it was. So if it was okay when you got there, but there was some rubbish, go run up if you can. If you've got the room in your bag, got the time, take a little bit of that with you as well. Leave it even better than what it was. So I've gone from a week of feeling sad about the ocean and its perils, and that's still happening. I'm fully aware of that, but let's think about the positives. Let's be positive. What can we do as individuals, as communities, to make an overall impact positively to our environment? We can make those small changes. So I really hope that this has come up with maybe something you haven't thought about, or maybe something you could just think about in the future. As I said, it's not for judgment this at all. It's literally what positive steps could we all take to all add up collectively to make our difference. Thank you very much, guys. I hope that you have a excellent week and I will catch you next week on Sunday at 6pm. Bye.